Welcome to Victorious Faith Broadcast. Good to be with you once again. Very excited to bring this interview that I did with Prophet Andre Bronkhorst from South Africa. This is going to bless you today. Open your heart up. Get ready to receive from the Lord. Stay with me all the way to the end, and I'll come back with some closing words. I never get tired of telling this story. The only thing I hear the Lord speaking to me when I share it, because it's a favorite story, is that that needs to quit being just a distant testimony. We should be walking in these regularly. Yes. But we had our youth group go up to an Indian reservation, and they have like, um, well, it'd be like jail for delinquent or young, minors, people that are underage. But what you find out with these kids on the reservation, some of these children, young ladies put out as prostitutes before they're teenagers. Um, kids in there for grand theft, auto theft stuff, uh, all sorts of criminal. And you find out why there's a lot of bad things that happen on these. So anyway, our youth group goes up there. And, uh, you know, the counselors love it when outside groups come in. So we were going to have a concert. The youth was going to have a concert, i.e. a worship service. And so what they would do is they'd get in early in the day, they'd set up their instruments, fellowship with the kids, talk with the kids, and then they would have dinner and come back for the evening service. And this story, there was a young lady and one of the counselors, because we have a group go up, got over there and she was an atheist. She said, I don't believe there's a God. Well, when you hear what these kids have had perpetrated on them done, you understand why. And so anyway, the concert started, the worship service, and they said it was so, in fact, my youngest son was on that trip, and I'm just thinking of the ones that I still know that were on that trip. All of a sudden, the presence of God fell so strong, and this young lady puts her hands up, the atheist. She's weeping. She's crying, and one of the young, one of our lady counselors came over, are you okay? And she goes, yes. She says, God is all over me and I don't even believe in him. The presence of God came on this little girl and broke her heart. And she began to feel the presence of God. And I thought it was funny. She goes, I don't even believe in God, but he's all over me. Yeah. So much of the time we're talking about a Satanist that was not seeking God and the Lord's presence penetrated that darkness. A hit man, he does this for a living, obviously hard in his heart. Yes. There was no gospel crusade. There was no advertisements and a voice spoke to him. And I think what that does is it encourages every one of us that if we've got prodigals, if we've got members of our family or distant family or friends or people that we love that are distant from the Lord, mm -hmm. the Lord's arm is not shortened that he yes. cannot save and I think what you were really sharing, especially in your message recently here, was the encounter. God is, and it's funny because our vision here that we write out, it's very simple, but it's not just words. It's it's what we feel yes. the Lord experiencing God, That's what... connecting people to serve others yeah. for life. Maybe. So the all of those things in experience God, <laughs> I actually came out of the Lutheran church, but I went over into a denominational church and the Lord led me there at that time. I was there a year and 10 months and I grew there, but then I went on to a Pentecostal spirit-filled church. But they used to get up and testify and they were proud that they did not seek experience. <laughs> you know, and I, I mean, when I think back on those testimonies, they're kind of nauseating. Yeah. But, and it, and it isn't that we seek the experience, we're seeking God. That's we stay open to the encounter. And uh, I think that's where the Lord has taken us right now. I think the world is more ready for God than we are to reveal him. And I think that's where we passed over. You know, when the corona thing happened, the Lord, I felt quickened to me. You know, he gave me some words about that. But one of the things he said, there was sifting that was going on. Yeah refining that was going on, but separation. Yeah, And you know, even Abraham and Lot, when Separate. Abraham was separated from Lot, then the Lord spoke yes. to him. So the, the, these encounters and this experience, I know that, that 
part of your testimony, if I remember right, that, you know, as a young man, you went through some difficult times. You were suicidal from what I understand. And, and you made, you know, the comment about your mom and dad that, you know, you'd lost your, your dad to the church. He was so busy with the church. And uh, then, well, I should say before he was saved, maybe to alcohol or something like that. But then when he got saved to the church, what was the defining moment in your life, Andre, that God went from an abstract or from, you know, some uh, something out there to where you had a personal relate? What was the defining moment? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, that I was suicidal. I just, you know, I got to a place where I messed up so bad that I had no option out. And uh, so, I mean, I'm not someone that that loves pain, that loves to suffer. And so when I got to that place where I just made so many bad choices and it all came down at the same time and uh, I had no future, I had no hope. I was, you know, the scripture, scripture says caught in the act. And so I had all the evidence against me. I just messed up. And uh, so I was sitting in my room um, and uh, there's various groups of people that were brought in and I mean, I was caught in the act and uh, I had no future anymore. So going to bed at night, getting up the next day, having no hope, no future, mm -hmm. no way out and uh, disappointed so many people. And I was in that moment where where suddenly the thoughts of suicide started, started to come. How do I get out of this? There's no way out. And uh, I was sitting and uh, this is what people have to understand that, you know, uh, there's a different, when we get thoughts of suicide or thoughts, the enemy sends those thoughts, but it is from him. And the scripture says that if we resist the enemy, if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. If we don't resist him, then those thoughts, those thoughts becomes stronger and stronger eventually to the place where we can get demonic possessed because we allow that. But the first thought doesn't mean that I have that demon, doesn't have that spirits operating in my life. It just comes by a thought. It's like the enemies. The enemy, just, just starting to, you know, trying to find the open door in our weakness. And so I was sitting in that moment where I was really, you know, uh, g getting anxious and overwhelmed by how do I get out of this, out of this place? There's, there's no hope. And the only way then, you know, so the enemy came and said, the only way out of this is suicide. That's the only way we can get out. And uh, so I'm thinking, okay, well, how do, what, what do I do then? How do I do this? And I'm thinking, you know, I don't like pain, so I want to commit suicide, but it's got to be quick. So I'm thinking, I don't want to suffer. I, I've heard too many people that try it and they, and they wake up in pain. So I'm thinking, how do, how do I, it's really what I'm busy contemplating. And then in that moment, I heard the voice of God. And uh, so people don't understand, you know, the scripture says that God is close to the brokenhearted. Mm. People don't understand that moment or that place. You know, we can be very harsh on people. If someone goes through a difficult time, we can be very harsh, you know, because of where they are. But that moment when you are there in that brokenness, God is close to the brokenhearted. You know, so in that moment, I heard the voice of God and it was not what God said. It is the voice of God. You know, it is it is the presence of God. God suddenly walking into the room. God needs no introduction when he walks into the room and his presence is in the room. I mean, it's the fullness of God in the place. So there's no lack. You know, there's, if we are praying, I don't know if you've experienced that where you're praying, you've got certain requests and then the presence of God comes into the place and then you don't have any requests anymore because he fills every yeah, void. Yeah. And it was that moment where God presence came in the room and I mean suddenly you know there's no more void but I immediately I knew I can't live without this this presence this voice this what I'm experiencing right now I can go with I, I this is what's sustaining me right now you know in this moment so I need this and that's where that was the defining moment you know is experiencing the presence of God in my lowest point the challenge is if we experience God only on the highs, then we, 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 it becomes works. We think, well, we can, we, we can experience the presence of God because we worked for it. We paid for it. We did something to get it. But to experience the presence of God when you did nothing for it, you know, where you are at the lowest point that you can be yeah. and the presence of God is, yeah. and you realize, you know, this is, this is the grace of God. I don't deserve anything. And that was really that that encounter where 
where I realized that, and in my, you know, to me, it was the voice of God. God spoke to me, but it was life. When God speaks, it's like a stream of fresh water. And, uh, and once you tasted that, you know, you, you, the, this, it doesn't matter what the counterfeit is. If you've tasted a real deal, you know that I, this is, I, I need this. Nothing else can replace this. Religion cannot replace this. Nothing man-made can replace what I'm tasting right now. And, uh, and so I've really made it my mandate from that moment to say, God, you know, how do, how does, how do I get more of this? And, you know, uh, and this is our carnal nature is how do I work for this? What, mm-hmm. what, what do I do to get this? And uh, it's really the presence of God. And I want to look at, if I look at every encounter in my life, I had many encounters, they all came out of the presence of God. I had time in the presence of God and then stuff started to happen. And that's why I say if the church comes back into the presence of God, the church is going to start to see more encounters. My focal point was not the encounter. It was spending time with God and then so, and then the encounter started to happen. And if we seek the presence of God, it will flow out of that. Now, earlier you mentioned that um, you were talking about Samson and Samson's, you know, his power. I believe that Samson's power did not come from his hair, but from his obedience. That's where his power really came from. It was not in the hair. It was because of his obedience. Well, the obedience, because the Lord said, don't cut your hair. Yeah. So the same way, his disobedience. This guy that I referred to that had the, that, that assassin that came in, it was obedience. He heard a voice that said, "Leave that, leave that place." If he did not leave the place, he would not. He would not have had the encounter. He walked. He did. He walked out of it. He responded to the invitation. You know what is so powerful about the obedience part? When we're obedient, that's what. Because, for instance, the suffering of the cross—that's not what redeemed us. It was the obedience. Yes. But the obedience required the suffering. And and when we obey the Lord, that absolutely destroys the enemy because obedience opens the door for the Lord to come in. In other words, the darkness has to flee. Yes. And and these are simple things. I know we've all said it. We don't curse the darkness. We turn on the light. Yeah. And when you turn the light on, the darkness cannot stay. And I think a key thing, what I heard a while ago, you said that presence the presence of God. And then what did you say? You said, I can't live without this. I was thinking on this because of, you know, it wasn't too awfully long ago we celebrated the resurrection of the Lord. So this year, in 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 this particular year, we went and looked at the physical side of crucifixion. So something that's always fascinated me was that Jesus sweat, as it were, great drops of blood. And there's a whole physical side mm-hmm. You know, and I was talking about in the 1990s, I had a, a tape, a VHS tape. We used to show it every year at Easter, and it was a forensic examination mm. of the death of Jesus. Mm. So these pain specialists and doctors came in. So the question came to me, why did Jesus sweat mm. great drops of blood? And most people would think, well, the crucifixion. Um, it was... Well, they created a whole new word just to describe the pain of crucifixion called excruciating. Mm. It means out of the cross. Mm. So that word was really, and then we have adopted that in the English language mm. to talk about a type of suffering that's out of the ordinary. Yeah. If you say it's excruciating, it wasn't ordinary pain. So I thought, what was it that caused Jesus to sweat blood? Great drops of blood. It's a medical condition, hematidrosis. Mm or hematidrosis, Um, and I believe it was the absence of God's presence that he would experience. Most people don't believe this, but I don't see it any other way or we would not be redeemed. He was forsaken by God. He said it, my God, my God, which is the cry of a lost man. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I don't think we know because it's been said in the worst, if I could use this terminology, in the worst hell hole on earth. Go to the worst prison. You could go to the Middle East where they literally had Christian torture chambers 
where they would hang Christians on meat hooks. They would, they would literally do things to them that were incomprehensible. Still the presence of God's there. How can you say that? Because if you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. But in hell, there is no salvation. In hell, there is no redemption. And I think there have been times we've tried to win the lost by speaking about how bad hell is. There's no way to describe it. It's truth. Yeah. Uh, I've heard people say, well, you shouldn't get saved just to escape hell. I say get saved for any reason. Yeah. You know, but the greatest is the love of God, the fellowship, his longing to be. And basically what you're telling us is in those dark moments of your life, yeah. you said, I can't live without this. I think the church would, would experience a paradigm shift if we had the presence of God that was so strong that it would be people saying, I've got to have what you had. And that's what that, that's yeah. what that assassin said to you. Yeah. I want what you have. How is it that a, a man that was doing what he was doing, taking lives, who enjoyed pain, suddenly say, because that's something nobody can duplicate or replicate, even the devil. There's a lot of counterfeits the devil does offer, but the presence of God is one he cannot replicate yeah, or duplicate. I really think that we, we're going to see more and more of these encounters in, in the earth. And I, would just, I, don't, I don't like to... Many prophets give a word for the year, a word for, I don't like to follow that standard because of our, you know, our calendar and God's calendar is something different. You know, we, God is omnipresent. So God is not limited to here. So I like to rather use the word season, but I sense that in this season, we are in the globe, not just in America, all over the world. We're going to see encounters, but the level of encounters is going to rise to a place where God is going to touch government. God is going to touch political leaders. Mm. God is going to touch people of influence. I saw it clearly. I saw prominent people that uh, that that are called celebrities that are having godly encounters. The thing is, you when you have an encounter, you can never deny it again. After I tasted, it, you know what. When, when God spoke to me there, it's it's like tasting the real thing. You can never deny that, never. I can I can never go against it. doesn't matter what happens to me if I lose everything, if I gain everything. The, the encounter remains. What, what I saw there, what I tasted there, what I experienced there firsthand, it's not someone else's story. It's what I experienced. It, it changed me completely. And that is what I sense. It's going to start to happen more and more to very prominent people, people that that we think that are you know it's people that we gave up on, people that we think well there's no way for them to be saved, there's no way for them to be used by God, and that is really a soul experience. Soul was not ministry material. You're talking Saul of the New Testament. Yes, he that was, became Paul. That became Paul. He was not. I mean, he was so far off persecuting Christians. And uh, and then he has this encounter, you know, where where where, where he has this blinding light experience, and uh, and God says to him, "Go to the city, and I'll tell you what to do." I sense we're gonna have people, and I want to you know put an emphasis on this: encounters are not always convenient. Mm. It doesn't mean because it's an encounter, it's comfortable, it's easy. He had an encounter there that immediately went against everything that he was doing. And the uh, voice said to him, go to the city. He got instruction there. And I see people of influence globally. I see governments. I see political leaders mm -hmm. that are standing, that are the leaders, like the leader of the satanic church. He's the leader of a movement that suddenly has such an encounter where he can never deny, you know, the love of God ever again. Never deny God because of what he experienced in, you know, in that moment. And those people are going to suddenly publicly stand up and they are going to denounce, you know, what they were involved with, what they are busy with. They're going to denounce the enemy and they are publicly going to stand for God. If, if I can ask you to indulge us one more time, because you shared you were in another nation. Yeah. And there was a very well-known celebrity. Could you share that story? Because it was an encounter yes. 
that there was an instant change. Yeah, so people of influence, people that have, have influence on the earth right now uh, in dif- different uh, markets, different businesses, different places, um, those are the people that we really going to see come to Christ uh, through encounters. So we were um, in Thailand, in Bangkok, and I was speaking to them specifically about what I'm sensing is going to happen now, is that pub- public people in public are going to stand up and announce. You know, and we... This is the thing with us as Christians is we have this formula. We're looking for formulas while God is looking for a relationship. We want to figure out this thing. What's the formula? How does it work? And uh, so God comes and this is what encounters does. It just messes up. It messes up the, the, the formula. It, God it comes, wrecks our theology. <laughs> yes, completely because we think it has to follow this route. And then God comes and he just... So I was speaking to the church in, in Thailand and they were finding it difficult to understand it. You know, how can someone encounter God outside of the church? You know, it's got to fit into the formula. And we were going back and forth and the translation was very difficult. In the Thai language, there's many words that... That, um, for instance, the word prophet and prophetic is the same word in Thailand, in the in the language. So there's many words that they find it difficult so to go through and interpret it. To interpret it, to translate, and they they're not understanding this. And so, I was ministering and trying to explain it to them over and over and over and that people of influence, people that are that are in public, you know, are going to come to to Christ in this in this season. And uh, so, um, so that day, uh, that day. A very prominent uh, guy in the music industry. This person, um, he sets up big uh, concerts in uh, in Thailand, uh, big orchestras, uh, and uh, he is well known for that. And this man, who is a Buddhist, right there, he comes to Christ. He has the encounter, and I sat with him, and we went through the, uh, you know, the story about what happened and what he experienced, and it, he had an encounter. And so the next day. So he comes to Christ, and so the word gets out about, you know, celebrities. And so they invite him to church, this person. He comes to the meeting. And so the leaders, we're sitting there, and the leaders are saying, is this what you is this what you mean? And I say to them, exactly, that's what I mean. It's people like this that, that has no understanding of God. And, uh, you know, suddenly they he has this encounter. And so I spent, so this, this guy, um, he actually, I was there with my wife and children. We were ministering in Thailand, and God did supernatural things there. And then this man came to Christ, and so he said, "Listen, can I please spend a couple of days with you? I mean, I just wanna, I wanna travel with you and and just be with you." And so we we spend after the conference, we spend a few days with him, and so he just got saved, not in church because of an uh, encounter, but but he came to church because uh, you know that he heard about this word going forth. And so I'm sitting with him, and and and. Uh, in this moment while I'm sitting with him, he's saying that, you know, he wants to do something for Christians. Um, he, I mean, he's still finding difficulty. He believes he's saved, but he still doesn't understand everything. And uh, and unfortunately, you know, the church in Thailand is very legalistic. So, you know, they're not just with open arms just welcoming him. They, you know, they, they've got certain standards of what has to take place now. And I'm sitting with him and he says, listen, I want to do something for Christians. And I'm going to use everything that I have. You know, in my world, I've got access to musicians. I've got access to theaters. I've got access to, you know, to the music industry. And he's always been doing these concerts in Thailand on an international level with the best of the best artists and venues and just quality secularly. And he says, I want to do something for Christians. And so, in fact, this year, Christmas, he he is writing, you know, and um, putting together one of the biggest Christmas productions. The same theater that has been used in the past for secular concerts, he is using the same theater, and he's putting up an entire Christmas production. Mm. On the, on, he showed me the level of excellence, the level of musicians' quality that he's bringing in, the, the amount of money that's going into this production, and he is going to do it free of charge. He's going to... It'll be there will be different screenings and times where people can come attend, and they will be able to come into this, you know, production mm-hmm. and over Christmas time this year and be able to see it. And this is just him, you know, when it, when it, he wants to do something for God. <laughs> one, encounter. one encounter, 
and uh, he doesn't understand it. He doesn't, you know, have, but he wants to do something, and he's just putting it all together. You know, this has been such a rich time. Brother. I appreciate you being here. Could you pray? Yes. Look into the camera and the listening audience. I just believe we're in a new season. Yes. And I like what you said. When God gives a word, it, it doesn't activate January 1 and expire on December 31. Yes. God moves in seasons. seasons. And if you could close us out in prayer today, yes. pray for us. Yeah. Um, I want to speak to everyone that is watching right now. And I sense it is a season of encounters. And so wherever you're watching from right now, I pray that you would experience. Now, we cannot ask for encounters. We cannot, whenever I study the encounters in the Bible, it found them. They were not looking for encounters. It came to them. So even as I pray for you right now, I'm really just positioning you to say that I'm open. God, I'm open. My life is open. My family is open. My business is open to experience what you are doing. That is our response. You know, Mary receives a word from the angel angel of the Lord appears to Mary and says, you are going to become pregnant with the Savior. And Mary's response is, let it be unto me. And this is what I want you, want your response to be, is let it be unto me. Whatever God's doing in the earth right now, let it be unto me. So Father, I pray mm -hmm. over every person that's watching this broadcast right now, and I declare a season of supernatural encounters. Uh, encounter in your family, in your marriage, in your children's lives, in your husband's life, in your spouse's life, uh, encounter in your business, uh, encounter where a business is right now not making it, just surviving, and then suddenly that business has an encounter and God takes it to the top. Families that are barely making it, that are going through difficulty, an uh, encounter that refires that family. Ministries, people that are watching right now that have ministries, churches that are dry, that don't have the power of God, that that church, that ministry would have an encounter and God would fire you up once again to stand up and to run for him like never before. I declare nations will have encounters. I declare that members of parliament, governments will have encounters. People of influence will have encounters. People that have major followings right now that have platforms influence, that they would experience encounters and they would use that for the glory of God. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I pray that this time with Prophet Andre Bronkhorst blessed you. I want to encourage you, visit my YouTube channel, like it. All of the broadcasts are there, plus a host of other ones. And I want to encourage you to share it with other people. And if you've never partnered with us, I want to invite you to become a partner. Powerful things happen through partnership. It'll open doors that otherwise cannot be opened. And so thank you for joining me today. I'll look forward to seeing you on our next episode. <music>